Christmas drummer Christoph Bohm, Robin Mahoney, and Stefan Weiss, Overcoming Bias, a good and filter designed for biased attitude discrimination with online collaboration. Yeah, that's final Okay, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Alessandro Porazia, and uh, I'm presenting our paper, Overcoming Bias, a good and filter designed for attitude discrimination uh, with online collaboration. Um, so uh, I'd like to start this presentation uh, talking about a little bit uh, what are the differences uh, with respect to the proof we all know uh, that makes us believe in the equivalent filter being actually the future of filtering algorithms. And I would like to start with a very simple problem, the attitude estimation problem, uh, with uh, considering explicitly the gyro biases. Um, if we start from the EKF, uh, the EKF actually uh, parameterized both the attitude and also the general biases as element R3, so I'll clean this case. And we actually all know the problems that comes with parameterizing uh, the attitude with uh, Euler angles due to the similarities they have. Um, then we have the gold standard, the multiplicative extended common filter, and something a little bit more new, the invariant extended common filter, which in general are not the same filter but they are for this example. And they both exploit the geometry of the rotation groups, um, but they keep the bias decoupled from the attitude, and when biases are considered these breaks, actually the group of fine property of the system, uh, basically validating all the advantages that comes with uh, uh, exploiting the rotational group. Um, then we have the equivalent filter, which is this new approach that actually tries to exploit the full geometry of a system, uh, coupling together the attitude and the gyro biases, uh, thanks for this same direct product group, which is called cotangent bounded group of SO3. And basically, exploiting the symmetry results in a filter that has improved asymptotic performance, faster convergence, larger basin of attraction. So more robustness to wrong initial condition and a uh, filter that is naturally consistent that actually means uh, that it uh, estimates the true distribution of the error. Um, okay, that, that is cool, but what is the problem? So the problem is actually the, the mathematics uh, behind the Corona filter seems complicated and a lot of people um, reported that it's hard to understand. So, with this research, actually, if we want to focus on a very easy to understand problem uh, with simple mathematics uh, that results in a simple filter, but that still shows the benefit and the power that come when considering an equivalent approaches. So for this reason, we focus on what we call the ABC of inertial navigation problems, because it's uh, the first and the easiest problem we could think of, and because it stands for attitude, bias, and calibration. Um, this work also considers a very important, or at least for us, important educational aspects because it provides an entry point to any researchers that actually wants to approach the world of equivalent filtering for inertial navigation problems. Um, okay, let's start with it. Uh, we have our system. R represents the attitude uh, of a rigid body. Uh, the omega represents actually the gyro bias and C, the calibration states of, uh, of a sensor that measures a direction. Uh, let it be a magnetometer, a sun sensor, a star tracker, a camera looking at a fixed landmark or everything that reaches a direction. And, the, um, and then we need to define a symmetry, which is actually the fundamental block the equivalent filter builds upon. And in this case, the symmetry is essentially a Lie group, in this case the cotangent bundle group of SO3, which acts on the system via an action fee. Um, and eventually also acts on the input, so on the gyro measurements via an action psi, and on the output on the direction measurement via an action row, as shown on the slides. Um, the existence of, uh, of an action phi actually ensures the existence of a lifted lambda, and therefore the existence of a lifted system. And the equivalent filter at the end is nothing more than a common filter or a Riccati observer designed for the lifted system. That means that we have a regional system on a homogeneous space our attitude bias and calibration system, we find a symmetry given by the cotangent bundle group of SO3, and then these two ingredients allows us to define a new system evolving on the Lie group uh, for which we design a filter. Um, of course, for designing a filter, we need an error definition, and in this case, uh, uh, is the, the so-called equivalent error E. Um, 
And the other thing that we need to pay attention is the fact that if, if we burn an error, uh, lives on a manifold, lives on a homogeneous space. And therefore, we need to define a set of local coordinates uh, for the error in a neighborhood of uh, a, a point that we can choose arbitrarily, in this case, C0. Uh, once we have done that, then we can simply design a filter, um, a Kalman many filters. But the cool thing about this uh, equivariant error uh, is the fact that it's very nice. It has a, um, an error dynamics that is, let's say, almost flat, and the linearization error is very uh, low also for quite large error. And that's actually where the performance of the equivariant filter comes from. Um, Okay, let's leave a little bit of theory and go a little bit to the practical style of the algorithm. As you can see, this is a core part of the algorithm and actually looks like a common filter with just a few differences. When we get the general measurements, we apply the action of a symmetry group uh, that we described before. Um, then we propagate the lifted system and propagate the covariance using the exponential map of the Lie group. Um, then we compute the update equation where we actually apply the action of a symmetry group on the direction measurement that we got. And finally, we just update the lifted system and update the covariance. Um, of course, you might have a question which is, okay, but what if I want the estimate of my original system and not the estimate of the system on the, uh, on the, on the lead group? Then we just need to apply the action P and we can get it. Uh, to validate our um, proposed algorithm that we did some experiments. We consider UAV, if you do the gyroscope and two direction measurement sensor, one magnetometer and one um, direction given by two GMSS receiver. So details on this are on the paper. And we compare to the IKF and accepted state of the art. We did different simulate, different experiments, one Monte Carlo simulation, uh, which results on the paper, and a one indoor real world experiment where we actually induce a dropout rate uh, in the magnetometer and one outdoor real world experiment where we actually simulated a scenario of uh, mid air filter beam sanitation. So, here are the results for the indoor experiment. And interesting enough, there is two phases in these experiments one vertical takeoff and a phase of regular motion. And uh, we actually induce quite a lot of initial error because actually we want to evaluate the performance in the transient uh, phase of the filter. And as you can see from the slide, actually the equivalent filter converges way better than the uh, IPF and actually faster. And it has also more robustness to divergence uh, when the filter is initialized from initial condition. Uh, similar results uh, are from the outdoor experiments, um, where we actually simulate a scenario of mid-air filter beam initialization. So the, um, the UAV was flying with air and we initialized the filter and we actually uh, a wrong initial condition because we initialized the filter at identity no matter where uh, the actual state is. And uh, again, we can see uh, a better convergence of the equivalent filter compared to the uh, IKF. And this is actually very important in our opinion because this is a difference actually between a standardized aircraft and a crashed aircraft. Or uh, in other words, it's actually a difference between a filter that requires tuning and uh, good calibration with respect to a filter that actually does not require tuning or almost require almost no tuning and almost no calibration. Um, that actually concludes my presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention. I'm here if you have any questions and feel free to reach me out uh, if you're interested or not.